Hello everyone, we're back on the Tiger service, Tiger Sport 2019 model. In this one we're going to be doing the brake fluid, uh, changing those, checking the brakes and um, purging the ABS unit. Big thing you've got to think about whenever you're doing brakes, this is your reservoir, is brake fluid instantly damages your paintwork. So you need to make sure you've got lots of rags around here to prevent any possibility of brake fluid getting on your paint. Similarly, when you're bleeding your front, make sure nothing can get on that wheel because it will damage that paint instantly. Now, if your bike doesn't have ABS, this is really an easy job if you get the right kit. And bleeding brakes, the key thing is not to let any air go back into the system. And when you're draining the fluid out and putting new fluid in, never let that go empty. Your rear reservoir is here. And again, it's the same. We'll make sure that nothing can drip off there. Now on a single sided swing arm, getting to bleed the brakes is a little bit tricky. This is where you bleed it from. You can get at it. Um, so I've got this cheap um, brake and clutch bleeding kit from Halfords. I've used it a few times. It does work. It works quite well. It's got a reservoir. And what you do is you put some fluid in the reservoir so that that tip is covered. And then um, you hook this bit onto the brake nipple and clamp it in place with, with this. this and it's got a non-return valve on the end of the pipe in the bottle, which prevents air coming back up. So it makes it quite easy to do yourself. All right, so we've got this all nice and cozy wrapped up. And we're going to use the recommended brake fluid, which is dot four. You always need more than you think because you're going to flush it all the way through the system. So remove the brake nipple cover. I've fitted my eight millimeter ring spanner on there, which is the size you need. I've attached the hose on and I'm just supporting the bottle with this. My next job is to put some more brake fluid in there and to take the top cover off the reservoir. So when you open your brake fluid, make sure that seals in place because brake fluid absorbs water from the atmosphere and becomes less effective. And you should always use a new bottle when you're doing this. Don't reuse old brake fluid because you can't seal it properly. Um, and it's not mega expensive and it is your brakes, so it is your safety. So don't cut corners. So there's the lid off the reservoir and the fluid. Now there's two ways to do this. One is to syringe most of that out, which is the easiest way, but you risk more drips. Or the second way is just to pump it all through your brake system. Now because I'm using a, a tool where you don't have to keep opening and closing that valve um, because it won't allow the brake fluid to come back in, I can just loosen that off and pump that brake fluid through. It's less risky than dripping brake fluid on your bike, so that's what I'm going to do. So as I'm pulling the brake lever now, there's no resistance and you can see that is draining out into the bottle. All right, so I'm going to top that up now. And put some more fluid in and we'll just Push that out carefully. And then when this one's drained through, that will be that caliper done. We still have to do the one on the other side. Right, so I'm confident now that I've pumped all that fluid through the system on the right-hand caliper. So I'm going to top it up and I'm going to do the same on the left. So now we're going to move around to the rear caliper and I'm going to see if I can do this without taking the back wheel off. The rear reservoir just unscrews. And you take the little cap off carefully. And 
and it's the same procedure. Top the fluid up. And then pump that through. And never let that reservoir empty or you're in trouble. But that should be that brake fluid flushed through. Right, so if you've got an ABS model, we need to just purge the uh, the ABS system. And to do that, you need a piece of software. And with the software, you get a gadget like this, which plugs into the diagnostic port on the bike. So I'm just going to connect that up now. So your diagnostic port lives in here there it is and we just plug our unit into that let's go get it bring it around so we plug this into this okay so this is dealer tool and one of the things on here is abs so we'll click on that and accept Connect to ABS. Right, so we do this about three or four times. We click on bleed system, press the brake pedal, and keep an eye on the brake fluid. that done so now we can top that up tighten everything up and that's the rear brakes done we'll just give them a check when you push this back in you've got to make sure that it's not creased or anything because it's the the shape of this that helps um, release the pads off the discs when you let go of the pedal so we're just going to push that it gently in place give it a wiggle and put its lid back on And now we just go around here I'm going to take this off and tighten everything up we're back at the front same setup as before we're now going to purge the abs so we hit bleed system pull the brake and we hear the pump going and we know now that that's front and back done so i'm just going to top that fluid up now and then uh, that's the brakes done. And then we're just going to check the calipers and the pads, etc. As with the the rear, we want to make sure this is not squished, so that we can just put this on. That's the way it come off. That's the way it's going on. Wiggle the top in place, and then we'll just screw these in. Right, when you've done all that, you should have a good firm brake lever. Really tight. Not a lot of movement before that. You can feel that really biting. And the same with your rear. That should be good and tight. That's the brake fluid done. Next thing is to just check the state of the calipers. And... Uh, the rear one is a pain, you can take it off with the wheel on, which is what I'm going to do, and then just check the pads, check everything, check the pistons, and then we'll see how we get on. But I don't think there'll be any problem. I've got new pads in case I need them. So I've got the EBC pads. They're not the recommended Triumph ones, but uh, they fit the calipers, and lots of other bikes use these, and I, I like EBC. It's a make I trust. So I'm going to tidy up all this brake fluid, make sure that it's all not in, anything's going to drip. And then uh, we'll crack on taking the calipers off. 
And just a quick note, I may be more wasteful than other people, but that's how much brake fluid I use to uh, purge everything. So you use a lot more than you would think for those little reservoirs. These two Allen keys, they're 8mm. So we're just going to loosen them off and take the caliper off and have a good look at it. Right, so whoever put these on, and I know who it was, clearly has over tightened them because that's taking a lot of force. So I might have to get some heavy artillery out on that to try and get it off. So, some of that pisses me off. You take your bike to a shop to have it worked on, and whoever it is who puts the nuts and bolts back on never looks at what the torque setting should be and just tightens it up to gorilla tightness. So, these have took an age to get off. But they're loose now. Always use the right torque settings. Only friggin' idiots tighten things up too tight, and that was well above what it should be so I'm checking them pads for wear and if that torch would shine a bit better so you can see better but you can see clearly there's plenty of pad left on there the wear marker is that little gap in the middle so we're just going to have another quick look at the pistons but they look fine as well I'm just going to give that a little clean um, so I'm just going to use a a soft brush, um, nylon bristle brush, and I've just used a waterless wash on there, give them a clean. You can see the pistons are looking good, Nick, there's no crud on them. Uh, so that one's okay, I'm gonna put that back together. Right, that's the caliper back on. I've just done it hand tight. I'll torque it up later and give you the torque settings that need to be used. And we're just gonna do the other side, which will be a repeat. Right. The rear caliper needs a 14mm socket and you've somehow got to get your wrench that's really hard to show you in there and behind that cable up there is the other nut it is possible without the wheel off it takes a lot of care not to damage anything with the uh, ABS cable uh, make sure you don't nip that but let's get that off that's the length of the socket I'm using. If you can get a shorter one, it's easier, but that's the only one I've got of the right size, so we'll use that. For this top one, I've actually seated the uh, the socket on the nut first, and then I'm gonna put the wrench up to it, because that's the only way I can do it. But here it is, the wonderfully designed rear caliper that collects all the crud. Right, so to get the pads out, We've got to undo this and this, which is a five millimeter Allen key. These two here. So once you've unscrewed them, you just need to pull them out with some pliers. And that's the rod that your um, brake pads slide along. So that needs to be cleaned and some copper slip putting on it before that goes back. Same with that one, you can see, covered in crud. Now the brake pads should come out. And you can see there's plenty left on them, so they don't need replacing, but we'll just get everything a clean. Inside there just looks grotty, so we'll give it all a clean out and hopefully it'll all work nice and smooth. Although not completely clean, that's a before straight out the caliper, that's an after. I've cleaned the clip, I've cleaned inside the caliper. I'm gonna clean this one and put that back together. If you notice, it's got a thin part on the spring and a much wider part. This wider part is for the brake pad to slide across and this brake pad doesn't move so what that tells you is the side where it slides across is the one that goes by the pistons because they're the things that come out and push the pad on the left hand side here so that's the way that spring clip goes back in and once it's in position just push it firmly home 
and that should stay in place ready to put the pads back in all right i'm gonna clean these up got some 400 grit wet and dry and we're just going to give them a rub over uh spray some of this on any lubricant really works uh, spray that on and we'll clean them up get them nice and well as shiny as can be there'll be corrosion on them but uh, and then we'll put some copper slip on them and rebuild the caliper right that's them um, cleaned up they're a bit better condition than they were and we're ready to put that back together so this is just copper grease uh, what you use this for is for any parts that aren't moving parts that you want to be able to take apart easy if you put a bit of this on the threads it really helps um, but don't put it on moving parts because they could just vibrate loose so i'm going to put some of that copper grease on here and slide it through and the idea of that is it means the brake pads um, you saw the little holes in the top of the brake pads will slide on there better meaning your braking uh, works a lot smoother and you won't get sticky uh, sticky brakes so you only need a little you can hopefully see the copper color on there and then that one so to make it easier to get the caliper on the wheel you need to push those pads apart as much as you can some people will stick a screwdriver in there which i don't recommend because that's putting a lot of pressure on one part of the, the pad you can get proper tools for it but i've got this chain wrench and it's got this long flat bit here and i just push that in push the pads apart push the pistons home and then that gets allows you to get that on the uh, disc much much easier but remember you've got to pump your brake pedal to tighten it back up again afterwards all right so i've used this to open that gap nice and wide so that will go back on the disc easy because it's just as hard to put on as it is to take off Right, with a bit of wiggling, I've got that first nut in, I've got it really loose so I can align this one up at the top with where it goes, hard to see and uh, very fiddly. So to put that nut back in again, it's a case of put the nut in the socket and put that in and screw it as far in as you can and then finish that off with your wrench to the right torque setting. Right, I'm just going to go around talking everything up, but just some numbers for you. So I'm just going to talk all them up and then that's part three completed. So we've done so far, we've done the oil and filter change in part one. We've done the strip down of the rear wheel and chain adjustment assembly completely and cleaned all that up and or greased the bearings. And now we've done the bleeding of the brakes and checking all the pads and calipers. Part three over and done with. If you want to see the rest of it, hit the subscribe button and uh, I'll hopefully see you along in, in part four.